Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and spring has sprung here in Utah. We've been very busy getting ready to get back on the road for our spring, summer, and fall travel season. And our mechanic, Kenny, is on his way over right now, as a matter of fact, to get our wheel bearings repacked. But while we're still here in Utah, we wanted to take the opportunity to take you up to Golden Spike National Historical Park and the Spiral Jetty. So stay tuned. As soon as our nation's first railroads began operating in the 1830s, Americans envisioned traversing the continent by rail. By the start of the Civil War, over 31,000 miles of rail crossed America's eastern states, but none served the territory west of the Missouri River. By 1862, Theodore Judah had surveyed a route across the Sierra Nevada and the Central Pacific Railroad was formed. Congress authorized the Central Pacific to begin building the line east from Sacramento and did the same for the Union Pacific working westward from Omaha, paid by cash and land grants. Those two lines would ultimately meet here, at Promontory, in the still barren Great Salt Lake Desert of northern Utah, about an hour and a half's drive northwest of Salt Lake City. Such was the fervor to accumulate more money and land that the Union Pacific and Central Pacific actually passed one another and laid parallel railroad grades for over 200 miles before Congress stepped in and declared Promontory Summit in Utah Territory to be the meeting place of the two lines. It was here on May 10, 1869 that the Central Pacific's Jupiter and Union Pacific's number 119 locomotives met head to head. After a golden spike was ceremoniously tapped, one final iron spike was driven into the bed to connect the two lines for the first 1,776-mile transcontinental railroad, linking east and west. It's early season, and the two replica locomotives normally on display at Golden Spike from early May to mid-October are still undergoing annual maintenance. But we're in luck for we have some photos to share from our last visit to the National Historical Park over the Memorial Day weekend in 2017. During November 1868, Rogers Locomotive and Machine Works of Patterson, New Jersey built the Union Pacific Locomotive No. 119. Seven months later, 119 received the call to pull Union Pacific Vice President Thomas Durant and his contingent of dignitaries to Promontory Summit. The original Jupiter was built in September 1868 by the Schenectady Locomotive Works of New York. After being dismantled, loaded onto a ship, taken around South America's Cape Horn to San Francisco, sailed upriver to Sacramento on a barge, and reassembled, Jupiter pulled Central Pacific's president, Leland Stanford's special train to Promontory Summit for the Golden Spike Ceremony. Both original locomotives were scrapped in the early 1900s. 
in O'Connor Engineering Laboratories of Costa Mesa, California, built these reproductions in the 1970s, with every dimension within a quarter inch of the original. Even when undergoing maintenance, though, visitors to Golden Spike National Historical Park can see the locomotives up close during ranger tours of the maintenance shop, conducted several times per day. Golden Spike National Historical Park offers two opportunities to drive the Transcontinental Railroad grade and see just what workers were building in 1869. The East Auto Tour is two miles long and allows visitors to see cuts, fills, and culverts. The West Auto Tour is seven miles long and is home to the 10 miles of track laid in one day sign, where the Central Pacific Railroad built 10 miles and 56 feet of track on April 28, 1869. Unfortunately for us, both tours are still closed for the winter season. So instead, we're going to drive to a unique nearby art installation in the Great Salt Lake, the Spiral Jetty. It's springtime, and this tiny little guy is still remarkably unsteady on his feet. We've also found ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, when the dinner bell is ringing. Out here in the middle of nowhere along the northeastern end of the Great Salt Lake sits the Spiral Jetty, an earthwork sculpture constructed in April 1970 of mud, precipitated salt crystals, and basalt rocks that is considered to be the most important work of American sculptor Robert Smithson. 
Spiral Jetty forms a 1,500 foot long, 15 foot wide counterclockwise coil, jutting from the shore of what was, at least just a few years ago, the lake. Thanks to the drying of the lake, a mile of lake bed now separates Spiral Jetty from the shore. Depending upon the water level, the sculpture is also sometimes submerged. Again, we fortunately have photos to share from a prior visit in 2005. Smithson reportedly chose this site based on the blood red color of the water and its connection with the primordial sea. The red hue of the water is due to the presence of salt tolerant bacteria and algae that thrive in the extreme 27% salinity of the lake's north arm, which was isolated from freshwater sources by the building of a causeway by the Southern Pacific Railroad in 1959. Following a record-setting winter season in Utah, this water may soon return again to Spiral Jetty. If you're looking for something else unique to do while visiting Golden Spiker and Spiral Jetty, Crystal Hot Springs is only about a 30 minute drive away. Here, hot springs range in temperature from 120 to 134 degrees Fahrenheit and contain the highest mineral content found in any hot spring in the world. In five minutes, 8,400 gallons of hot spring water estimated to be 22,000 years old surfaces. Along with water from an adjacent cold spring, these waters fill three mineral hot tubs, a large soaker pool, and an Olympic-sized swimming pool year-round. There used to be an RV campground at Crystal Hot Springs, but that facility is now permanently closed. Instead, head just a few miles south on I-15 to Willard Bay State Park. This is a unique, nearly 10,000-acre freshwater reservoir right in the Great Salt Lake, separated from the lake's salt water by a 26.4-mile earthen dike. There are several campgrounds within the state park, some including full hookups, like those here in the Cottonwood Campground. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting Golden Spike and the Spiral Jetty with us. If you like this episode, it's extremely important to us that you give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section. It's where we'd love to hear from you after each Grand Adventure, which we air every Wednesday evening. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer yourself, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a Grand Adventure. Finally, we'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday, please remember life is nothing but a Grand Adventure. We'll see you then.